Welcome to Spotlight. I'm Ryan Gertzma. And I'm Robin Basselin. Spotlight uses a special English method of broadcasting. It is easier for people to understand no matter where in the world they live. Love and sex. These are two of the strongest human desires. Many people dream of finding the right person. They imagine loving that one person for life. They may dream of having children together. Often, they want to enjoy security and love into their old age. Sex is an important part of this kind of loving relationship. Sex helps people feel physically and emotionally connected. Some people claim that pornography or porn will help people's sexuality. Porn is print images or film that shows sexual acts. People like porn because they like sex. But how does porn affect real-life relationships? Today's Spotlight looks at the question, does porn kill love? Today, it takes very little effort to find porn. Using the internet, a person can find porn in just a few seconds. The making and selling of porn has grown into a huge industry worth billions of dollars. The Sunday Times UK newspaper reports that the internet porn industry makes $3,000 every second. That is a lot of money. But how does all this pornography affect the quality of the real, loving relationships that we all desire? Well, one of the results of porn is that it can lead to feelings of insecurity. The porn industry uses actors and models to create their sexual images. Sometimes they also use technology to enhance or change these images. Most men and women cannot look like the people they see in porn. When a person enjoys porn, they can start to expect unreal or impossible things from the person they love. This can make the person they love feel like they are not good enough. Luann Weston is a doctor who works in the field of human sexuality. She explains, The average woman feels shame because her body is nowhere near as perfect as what she sees on film. When women see the men in their lives enjoying those women, they often feel hopeless. They fear rejection. Porn also presents false ideas about sex itself. Writer Michael Castleman writes about matters of sex. He believes that porn is ruining love. He argues that porn is not real sex. And he thinks this is a major problem. In a story called the real problem with pornography, he wrote, Porn sex 
is the big lie, told over and over and over again. Yet, the large amounts of internet porn make people believe that porn sex is the way sex should be. Most porn does not show real sex in real relationships. It does not involve emotion or shared lives. It is not concerned with love. It only shows acts of sex. And these acts are getting more and more extreme. The porn industry competes for profit. And industry competition leads to more extreme kinds of porn, even violent porn. Extreme porn is becoming more common. The Sunday Times UK News reports that 88% of the material from several popular online porn websites includes physical force or violence. But the truth is that most people who watch extreme porn do not even like it. In fact, they can be sickened by it. Yet they still want it. Why would someone feel a strong desire for something that they do not like? Something that can even make them feel sick? The answer is one of the most dangerous things about porn. Recent scientific research proves that porn can act like a drug on the human brain. When people start using porn, they can become addicted. They develop a harmful need to watch it, and they find it very difficult to stop. Porn affects the same part of the brain that drugs do. When a person first sees a new kind of porn image, it causes excitement. But watching the same images over time causes your brain to react to them as though they are normal. Just like a drug addiction, porn addiction requires more and more porn to reach the same level of excitement. This also leads to more extreme forms of porn. But because they are addicted, people can start to desire things that they do not like or agree with. They can experience intense physical desire for something they know is damaging just like drugs. These kinds of desires do not lead to real relationships. They only lead to more porn. Gail Dines is a university teacher and writer. She has studied the effects of porn for many years. Dines wrote a book about her research called Pornland. She told the Guardian newspaper, The earlier men use porn, the higher the chance that they will have trouble developing close relationships with real women. Some of these men desire porn instead of sex with a real human being. Naomi Wolf is another famous writer who writes about sexuality. She travels the world to talk to people about these issues. Wolf has also found 
that porn does not help people come close to each other. Instead, it separates people. She writes, The young men talk about what it is like to grow up learning about sex from porn. They talk about how it does not help them understand how to be with a real woman. When I ask about feeling lonely, a deep, sad silence comes on the groups of young men and women. They know that they are lonely together, even when they are having sex. And they know that porn images are a big part of that loneliness. Porn may satisfy some basic sexual desires, but it does not satisfy our deep human need for loving relationships. And the porn industry has a financial interest in creating porn addicts. The more porn people watch, the more money the porn industry makes. But the industry does not have any interest in making human relationships stronger. Unlike real-life sex, research shows that porn does not connect people emotionally. Instead, it separates people. Porn leads only to more porn, instead of helping people enjoy their sexuality together. Experts seem to agree that porn is killing love. And it is making us lonely. In a story for the Daily News UK, Wolf asks an interesting question. Are we sexually free if porn is taking over our minds and making us unable to keep meaningful relationships? A powerful industry is trying to turn us more and more into sexual and emotional machines where we are only able to enjoy sexual desire in a room with a computer alone. The writer of this program was Jen Hawkins. The producer was Michio Ozaki. The voices you heard were from the United States. All quotes were adapted and voiced by Spotlight. You can listen to this program again and read it on the internet at www.radioenglish.net. This program is called Does Porn Kill Love? We hope you can join us again for the next Spotlight program. Goodbye.